Hi, everybody, and welcome again to Z-Code Sports System. Here we developed automated systems to help you win big. Again, it doesn't matter what sport you're betting. We've got all the tools for you right here. Before we get into some Major League Baseball action for July 1st, I want to invite you to join. Then you'll have access to the VIP club section here. You see all these tabs across the top. All these will help you make your picks. Okay, so the Major League Baseball season is getting very close to the All-Star break, and teams are really starting to fight for position, and they want to make a good uh, second-half push towards the postseason. So we're going to take a look at three games. It's a very light schedule. It's only three games for July the 1st, but we will take a look at every one of them for you right here. So the first game we want to look at is Houston and Toronto. You see Houston comes in burning hot down. They are winners of five out of their last six, coming off of a loss against the Mets, while Toronto is ice cold down just two and four over their last six games. If you look at the uh, over-under streak, you can see that Toronto has been involved in games over the line in each of the last six, and Houston involved in over the line in four out of the last six. The score prediction is for Houston in a six to nothing shutout. Confidence prediction is at 61%. Houston comes into play um, second in the AL West, a game under 500, and they're behind the Seattle Mariners. Toronto is the last in the AL. He's 15 and a half behind the, the Orioles and the Yankees, who are tied at the top. If we take a look at the power ranks indicator, see Houston was at plus 29 for a bit, just because of that one loss, it dipped down to plus 22. And Toronto has plummeted from 19 down to plus 6 just over the last uh, day. If you look at the head-to-head -head matchup between these teams, back on April 1st through the 3rd, it was Houston winning two out of three games in Houston. Two of the three games were, were blowouts, but in fact, shutout blowouts, 18 to nothing, and Toronto only scored two, day, two runs in the entire series. If you look at the stability factor, you can see that Houston is pretty consistent with regard to their favorite underdog status. And you can see um, Toronto, if you look at their trend, they have been marginally consistent a little bit up and down but they've been marginally consistent at plus seven so toronto is just 19 and 20 at home but houston is just 16 and 22 on the road uh, in the scoring differential you can see that it is plus 25 to minus 50 in favor of houston um, i like houston in this one um, as it continues towards the top of the division but i'm going to pass on the over under Okay, now we have a National League East battle here, the Mets and the Nationals. The Mets are on fire right now, burning hot winners of uh, five out of their last six, and they have climbed into third place in the division, while the Nationals are dead stats, just one and five over their last six games. You can see it, the over-under, the teams have been involved in games over the line in um, eight out of the last 12, and the score prediction is for the Mets by an 8-2 score, and the confidence in the prediction is rather high. We don't usually see it this high. This is at 80 2.7 percent so we have a rather high confidence that the Mets are going to come away with a pretty big win here um the power ranks indicator you can see how the teams were pretty much neck and neck back on the 23rd and since then Mets on a steep upward climb to 27 Nationals on a steep downward climb to plus one head to head wise the teams met uh three games in the beginning of June, and you can see that it was the Mets winning all three games on the road, and this, the, the scores were pretty high. This is a 15-run game in the first one, 8-7. to seven. There was a 10-run game and a 9-run game, but the Mets swept in Washington. Um, if you take a look at the scoring differential, it is a plus 16 to minus 17 edge for the Mets in the scoring differential. So let's take a look at the volatility oscillator. And you will see that neither team is extremely consistent with regard to their favorite underdog stats. You can see the Mets line here, you know, up and down. They haven't been higher than plus two all season in this category. Actually, in fact, plus two was in the uh, preseason, spring training play. And the Nationals here, again, up and down as well. They've been a little bit more consistent lately over the last few days. And they're at plus six in that category. So I like similar results as the last time. I don't see Washington putting up much of a fight. I like the Mets and a game over the line. Now we're looking at Milwaukee and Colorado. Again, here's a, a game with two teams heading in opposite directions. You see Milwaukee burning hot top in the AL Central, winners of five out of their last six games. And Colorado dead status. They have lost their last four. 
and uh, just one in five over the last six. If you look at the over under, the teams have been involved in games in, on opposite sides of the line. Two out of the last three games for Milwaukee have been under, but the last two games for Colorado have been over. The overall trend over the last 12 is eight over and four under between the two teams. The score prediction of 10 to three in favor of Milwaukee would be a, an over the line score. Um, Confidence in prediction, just a little bit higher than a toss of a coin at 57%. On the power ranks indicator, look at Milwaukee on, the, on a uh, steep upward climb up to plus 29. And Colorado has been steady over the last couple of days at plus 5. The two teams have not yet met this season in the regular season, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's take a look at a couple other things here. Um, one thing to, to note is that Milwaukee is plus 71. The scoring differential and a National League worst minus 135 for the Rockies. We we'll also have the worst record in the National League, which I might add. Um, we have a little tilt in the oscillator. You can see Colorado is extremely stable. It doesn't mean they're good, it just means that they're extremely consistent, meaning that they're mostly losing when they are the underdogs. And Milwaukee is, after a while of being very inconsistent, you can see have been very consistent lately, and they're now at plus 10 in that category. So in the end, I don't see how the Rockies can win this one. I mean, there's always a chance, but definitely going to go with the Brewers and the game over the line. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the picks for the three games for July 1st. Happy betting, and see you next time.